<laughs> today I traded Tesla and SPY today. You guys better watch the live trading video of Tesla. It was a super amazing, super nice trade to the downside. And then SPY has just been so slow these past few days, but we still were able to catch two trades on that today. And you guys better watch it live right now. Enki's also trying to break this area right there. What's Spy doing? Spy even at a, Spy a low day? Bro, that's so weird. Spy's price action today is so, well, like, off. I'm in these Tesla puts. Nice. Wow, these contracts are moving already. Wow, holy cow. They're actually moving. I think about 75% off right here. So I sold 75% on that push right there. Just waiting. NQ is still just doing his thing. It's all about patience. That was a nice move, bro. Yeah, 81s. Because that's where it kept holding up. Because that was um, the lower day. Like, this two minutes in, that was the lower day. Still rejecting that too. Bro, look at Tesla in the bro. Tesla is weak and NQ is trying to come up. If NQ starts going down, this thing could fly down. But it better NQ can't keep going up though. Oh my gosh, Tesla is so weak compared to NQ. Tesla is so weak compared to NQ. If NQ starts going down, it's just flying down. But NQ needs to come start coming down. Bro, look at that. Tesla is red. <laughs> NQ is green. If NQ could start rejecting though, stop going up, NQ. Nice new low. Let's go. There we go. Patience. So uh, it's about another 15% off right here. Now I got about 10% left. Nice. Optimizing the trades. No emotions. You just trade the chart. That's it's gonna let these ride out. Got about five percent left. Just gonna let it ride. Cause NQ is also trying to come down as well, so I just wanna see. It's still holding that low day. Just wanna be safe here, that's why I took some off there because NQ is trying to bounce that low day. But Tesla still got some room though. We'll see. 126. Come on. Give it to us, baby. NQ finally broke out of that lower day zone, but it's just chilling there. Sellers are coming in crazy on Spy. <laughs> Spy's at 388 right now? Bro, oh my gosh. Thank you's also bouncing here. Twos, ones. Broke it. Nice, dude. Take about a little more off right here. I, I literally got like a few contracts left. Petroleum out of five minutes. You're capping, bro. You're giving me a time limit on my trade? <laughs> That's crazy. It's still going. It's still going. I feel like breaking out in choir right now. Bro, <laughs> for real. Yeah. Like, uh, bro, petroleum is about to hit. You're right, you're right. I'm all out of that. <laughs> I just want to be careful with petroleum. All right, so now let's go over the Tesla trade. Now, number one, right off the bat, this 127 area was yesterday's low, which made this a perfect reaction this morning. You guys can see that it reacted perfectly at this 127 area, making a low of day of that 126A1. 
Then we came down, it was a slow grind down, and then it bounced exactly at that low day area, and then bounced right back up. Once I saw it hold under 127 on this 1045 candle, that's when I started getting into my position, and then I saw it still holding under 127, so I was like, I'm gonna get fully in right here. And then this next candle was still holding under 127. That main area that I wanted was that 126.81. As soon as that area was able to broke, it absolutely flushed. And then I was also looking at NQ correlation because I'm not gonna get out of this super early, especially because how weak this is looking. NQ started coming up and Tesla did not budge. It still stayed down there while NQ was going up, which shows that Tesla was weaker than NQ and it was weaker than the entire market, which means that if NQ starts to come back down again, this thing will absolutely flush. So I just waited, I was patient, I saw NQ start coming up, but I saw Tesla kind of holding there. So I just waited, I was patient with this, I started selling on that push already, as you guys heard, but I was just waiting. And then next thing you know, NQ starts coming down, and then this thing comes right back down. I saw also rejecting that previous low day of 126.81. This was looking very nice. And then we had this, another nice push in our favorite. And that's why I started selling some more. And then I was just being patient. There's no reason for me to sell right here when I know, look at how it got there. People are going to be taking profits. This is literally the seventh red candle in a row. There got to be a green candle somewhere, a nice small green candle. And then we just keep going and going and going. Now we're at this 126 area. I'm taking profits along the way. I'm just waiting. Another green candle. Okay. You know, this is starting to slow down a little bit, but not enough to where I'm going to get fully. I'm just going to let these runners ride. And then we broke that 126. I took a little bit more off there. And then I saw that news was about to come out in five minutes. So I had a choice. Do I want to be a degenerate and a gambler or do I stick to my plan? And I know I don't trade during news. Definitely the second one. I don't trade during news. So any sign of weakness before the news comes out i wanted to try and get as close as possible to that news candle but i wanted to have a safe distance just in case it comes out earlier or whatever so as soon as i saw it kind of holding up in this area this candle right here kind of showed slowness because we broke 126 and we kind of paused in this 125 area and i also know that there's a lot of support at this 125 and the way that we came down i'm trying to find a weakness point to where buyers are going to take advantage of the sellers in a certain area and when I saw this and then I saw this next candle not make a low day and not follow through and it was holding up in this 125.6.7 area that's when I was like you know what? I'm just gonna get fully out the news is about to happen this thing's trying to bounce at this area there's a lot of support at that 125 I'm not gonna chance it I'm just gonna get fully out right here it was looking very weak for sellers and I, I didn't have time. I, I literally only had like three minutes left until news came out. So that's when I got fully out. And that was the best decision of this trade, honestly, because that was literally the best sell that you could have got. Because next thing you know, this thing started just coming up and up and up for another 20 minutes after we sold, which this was the perfect low of this area. So you guys can see exactly how that played out. A very, very nice trade. Tesla has been very amazing this week. And I wish I could say the same thing about SPY. Honestly, this is just horrible, but we were still able to execute very, very good trades. Again, you can't really blame the price action. You just gotta blame yourself. If the price action is so bad, then why are you getting into the position in the first place? So you cannot put the blame on the price action for you losing. Why do you take it in the first place? You just got to stick to your plan and execute your plan and don't get overly confident, overly emotional about trades, especially in the past two weeks. You just got to be very patient and very disciplined. And that is no excuse for you to not stick to your plan. If you stick to your plan, you'll make it out alive. Just look at me, right? I'm able to stick to my plan. You know, yesterday was a little rough. The day before was a little rough. And my little rough is like break even or like a small loss or something like that. But that's rough. You know, our strategy is very consistent. I made my strategy to be very consistent to the point where it doesn't happen like that. And when I get in, it got to follow through. And it usually does. But this week has been very slow and very choppy. It requires extra discipline and extra patience. And I know that and I applied that. And I'm just very cautious this week. Very patient and very disciplined. There's no excuses. I mean, I, I traded two things on SPY today. I traded this upside break above this 390 area. This is where I got into calls and I sold shortly after. Just a nice quick 8% scalp, nothing crazy there. Just because I know that price actions at upside is not it. And this was a perfect example. Again, I stuck to my plan. I reacted to what I see and I learned from my past mistakes. 
I saw upside has just not been working out. You know, the daily time frame, you guys could easily see this thing is just coming down and down and down very aggressively. We literally, in two days, we came down the same exact amount that it took six days for SPY to come back up, which shows you that sellers are just so aggressive. It took six days for them to come all the way up just for us to drop right back down in two days. Buyers are just not there. They're not aggressive enough. So I just took my profits and got out of the trade 8%. And then I took this downside trade. I got in the puts right around this area right there. And then I just had to be extra patient with this. We had the zone right here. I was going to get out. My stop loss on this was a right around this 389.4. I got in around the 20s. So about a 20 cent stop loss just because I wanted to be patient. This was looking very, very weak. Got into puts right there. Came down, came back up, came down. I was just being patient with this. And then when it started coming down, that's when I started taking some profits off the table just because it was just holding the 89s. When I saw it came under 389 and came right back up, I was like, you know, I'm just gonna take some more off right here. So I took about like 75% off at that 89. And then I just waited, it retested his zone, came back down. He had to be extra patient with his thing. And then when we had a nice move in my favorite, that's when I was fully out. I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna get fully out right here. This is taking way too long. If I'm getting in a trade, it gotta go in my favor. If not, you're wrong in the trade. And sellers were just slowly winning just a little by little, but there were still buyers in that area. So that's why I had to be extra cautious there. I said, once I get a nice aggressive move in my favor, that was my plan just to get fully out right there. I'm not messing around with that. Cause next thing you know, if I didn't get fully out right there, this thing could have just easily did this big candle right here or this candle could have been right there, right? This thing could have flipped so easily because they were trying to hold this area so much. So I'm not trying to be in the middle of a sellers versus buyers type of a warfare. When I get in, I already know that the sellers won the war. I already know that the buyers won the war. If they're still fighting, I'm not gonna run in the middle of the battlefield. So I'm just gonna let them fight it out. And that's exactly what I did for the entire day of SPY. I didn't take anything else on SPY. You know, SPY just did not deserve my capital. It did not deserve my risk. Every single trade that I take, you know that there's risk involved. If I get in, I know the position size that I'm going to use and my risk involved. I don't think SPY deserved any of that today. If I'm going to be 100% because look at this price action. Like this is disgusting. It doesn't deserve my capital. It doesn't deserve my risk. I don't want to risk capital on this. This is disgusting. Until it steps up his game, I'm going to be very cautious with it and I'm going to be extra careful with it versus something like this. Listen, I will take my risk on this, right? Every single trade, you know that there's going to be a risk. Why would I risk capital on that previous chart versus this? This is such a nice chart, a very, very nice chart. Literally from here, you can see reactions in this area. If I was watching this more closely, a nice downside move right there. Like, look how clean this is. This looks like I'm looking at the old spy. And you got to remember that every time you take a trade. Hopefully this helped and I'll see you guys in the next trade. Peace. Hey you. Yes you. Listen, if you guys are not in my Discord chat room where I live trade every single morning, post all the zones, all the key levels, everything that I'm looking at for the day. Post three to five lessons per week to teach you guys the exact strategy that I use that allows me to consistently bank on spy every single day. That has helped thousands and thousands of students become profitable traders around the world we got people in the UK people in Canada people in the United States the best part is that you guys can join this chat room as well all you guys have to do is click the link in the bio or you guys can message me on Instagram if you guys have any questions pop it up right here and I hope to see you guys in there peace hey, yo, Rand.